Everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome, Z Garcia. Hi, good morning. Welcome. I'm Sam Healy. <laughs> that wasn't awkward at all. <laughs> so welcome. Welcome. Go hit to, it to board game Back. breakfast. Hi, I'm Z Garcia. Here's my co-host, Z and Sam. <laughs> Let's. All right, cut that out in the editing room. <laughs> oh no, wait, it's live. No, Start again. again. Ah. Start again. Hi, I'm Tom Vassell. Hi, I'm Z Garcia. Hi, I'm Sam Healy. Bam! Hello. Nailed it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Alrighty, board game breakfast. This is the one before Gen Con. Uh, Gen Con's around the corner. All kinds of stuff is happening. Next week, there'll be a gazillion announcements. Maybe not. We'll find out what, who Asmodee has bought next. That's Come we on. found that out at a Gen Con before. When yeah, they we bought, did. Yeah, we did. That was Z-Man Games. They bought. Who do you think they're buying next? Oh, come on. The I don't know. Easy. I'm asking. <laughs> what? <laughs> come on, what? <laughs> All right, let's get off the dumb jokes. Let's jump to the news. <sighs> All righty, not a lot of news announcements this week, but some big ones. And always, like I would, I'm assuming starting today or tomorrow we're going to see a week's worth of announcements from Fantasy Flight. A week's worth. One every day, huh? Yeah, that's, what, that's usually what, what they that's do. That's what they've yeah. done. They might wait till Monday or whatever, but they usually do announcement, announcement, announcement. On Wednesday, Fantasy Flight does a big in-flight report where they'll announce something huge. It may or may not be huge, but to them it will be huge. Something Last year it was huge. Key Forge. So, all right, but here is the news. So, first of all, Mondo Games is working with Restoration Games, adding... Jurassic Park theme to the Unmatched uh, cool. series. Have you played Unmatched yet? No, I've not. You you should because I I want you to. like. Um, I unboxed it and it looked really good. Well, it has that line of sight system you love. Yes. And and what game is that in? Tannhäuser. This is a replacement for Tannhäuser. You said that. I did. You got uh, me to say that just so that you could say that. I did. Well, anyway, I don't know. Um, <laughs> But this adds Jurassic Park. So there's going to be two packs. There's going to be um, Sattler versus T-Rex, which is the Ellie Sattler against the T-Rex. Oh, really? I haven't heard about that one. Yeah, yeah. that's Because I'd only seen this. Yeah, this is InGen versus the Raptors. So that makes Who's sense. Sattler? Sattler, like... Ellie Sattler. She's the lady who ran around in the dark with the Raptor and then got the arm on her shoulder from Samuel Jackson. But it was just his arm. From is it like a lady movie. who like grabs his head and turns him to look? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, got it. Which is weird because like what will her special powers be? Running. Science, fool. And science. <laughs> no, but like if they put I her, believe only in science. See, like the first one's called Ingen, that sounds like a team of people. Yes, sure, but it's mainly this hunter guy, clever girls, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, it's his official it's name. name. I know who wins man. this battle, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the change end. history. T Rex, man, that means eventually I can take like a T Rex up against Bigfoot, which you know happened historically. That well, is sure. documented fact. Actually, <laughs> they've fought. You know, people are going to buy both packs because they're going to want to play T Rex versus Raptors. Of course, yeah. Right? But, so. but still. We also know who wins that battle. Raptors too. versus Bigfoot. Actually, we don't know who won the T Rex versus Raptors. I'm pretty sure he was the one that was screaming at the end victoriously. Sure, but the other Raptor then jumped on his back and then we faded out. We don't know what happened. Maybe the other Raptor won. I've never seen the movie, oh, so can we avoid spoilers? <laughs> there were three. There were three. It four is 24 Raptors. years old, the movie. And there's only one left. I'm pretty sure the T Rex can take it. All right. Star Wars Destiny gets another booster set. This is actually, okay. I know it's not that big of a news necessarily unless you're a fan of this, but right. they're still pushing it. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, it's still, it's survived, which is, you know, a thing. But I think they're starting to repeat stuff because I know they already have a Boba Fett. And I feel like they already have Luke Skywalker. I think that came in the original set. But, yeah, but hey, there's more stuff. That's the X-Wing pilot, Luke. But now you got to destroy the Death Star. So that is a thing. 
that's a new see the plot there for setup give this plot 20 shields and you can try to uh, you're trying to it's, it's a thing to blow up the start and the, the really, dark side has constructed that star. I start. really like the look of this game I just hated how big the dice were that's I don't what know what it was really? yes kind of chunky they yeah they look, they look cheap yeah, I could see they that. They look cheap, and that's why I just I think they needed that much surface to print everything. No, yeah, but, yeah. No, but it I looks agree. They great. Look the, like the graphic design is awesome, but those big dice just threw me off. They look like building blocks for kids or something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. All righty. Uh, the Schmidt is yours. Winners were announced, and to our relief, just one one. Just one one. Just uh, one. Just one. Was the winner. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank the you. one that just won. Was just one. Yes. Thank you. Also, wingspan. Both of the. This was probably the Spielers Yars winners that I saw more people predict correctly. Yes. Than ever before. Yeah. Well, they were like shoe ins practically, right? Well, we hoped. No, yeah, yeah, you never know. Right? <laughs> but congratulations to both of them. That's cool. And these both will sell a lot, and you'll see. And wingspan will be once again out of print. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, winning this kind of award can usually uh, predict selling X number of extra copies. So, right. uh, hopefully, they're hitting that reprint button real hard. Yeah. I don't know how much the Kenner Spiel causes sales, but the, the but Spiel, they I say mean, there's 100,000 or so. Not as many as the other one, but I'm sure it will get a bump if it's available to buy. Give in the bump. All right, come on. And Explored announced Taburu. A physical and digital board game console system. Taburu. So I guess Explored is the the digital side of things. Right. And so, I mean, there's sensors on the table. So basically, you'll be able to put your figures on. Your phone will be your player board. Okay. And then there's a like an iPad, or you can put it on the screen like this in the background with everything else. So we've been sitting on this for a long time. Since Essen. At Essen, they pulled me and Sam into a secret room and swore us to death to secrecy and showed yeah. it to us. They showed us base zombie side, which I'm ambivalent on, and you have not played because of Zombie Side Black Plague. No, I have played it. I played it way back. That's no, I'm saying you wouldn't play it again because of Black Plague. Correct. However, yeah. I would have played it based on the system. It yes. was they showed us like beta, beta, beta. Right. And it, and was, it was awesome. awesome. Yeah. Because it, it's like Mansions of Madness type situation and Very or Lord so. of the Rings, but stuff is happening and you move on the board and it's because you moved here. Then the iPad like whoop, sound zombies effects, show up. Now put effects, four zombies on. Music, I mean everything. It really brings the entire experience to boot. And again, you can like, not have to worry about what does this weapon do? It's all built into the system. Yep. So the people say, why is it not just a big video game? Because there's still the miniatures and stuff on the table. Right. And this is, we saw Zombie Side, but they're making it work with other games. I know that um, they said it's going to work with, uh, okay. what's that game I love? The, with the aliens attacking. Project oh, Project, Project Elite. Elite. Project Elite. That would be um, good for that game because it's uh, the yeah. mad speed type game. Yeah. I, I don't really ease playing that, I can assume. The mm. first game for it, though, is going to be Zombicide Evolution Las Vegas, a campaign-driven game in that world. Okay. They're going to be Modern, uh, showing off this at Gen Con next week. Um, so I know, again, this is people are like on the internet or having a cow oh, blah, 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 blah. but I'm excited about this I hope it works well wait what are they saying on the internet <laughs> that's what I thought it was yeah, okay. well it's this whole well you know I, if I wanted a computer game I'd just buy a computer game then fine but I like the idea of mixing the two I think that's neat mm -hmm. yeah. a computer game is usually a bunch of people sitting there staring at the screen they have this board and sit there and you can pause like a board game and we have a good time, but at the same time have that cool effect and stuff. Yeah, yes. baby, mix it. What happens I when like Blood a, Rage comes out? I like this? a little peanut oh. butter in my... <laughs> Are you going to play it? Uh-huh. Are you going to play it anyway? Yes, have yeah, some. right. So. All right. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Now, we announced <laughs> this <laughs> earlier, <laughs> but Funkoverse says... Or the Funko Pop had bought... Say what? They bought the whole... Funkoverse? ...design team from... Uh, place. I, I forgot to say it. Forest Perens. Forest Perens and Creative? Yes, them. 
So they got that whole team. You had to have looked that up. No, I mean, that they're Prospero Hall, Force Prusen, you know. Right, so oh, they got them to bring on and make some games set in the Funko Pop universe, whatever that might be. So they made a strategy game where you can combine your favorite characters and go head-to-head -head in four exciting game scenarios. Head-to-head. Have you seen... <laughs> Have you seen the IPs they got for this? They, I did. And okay. Have you seen I the IPs? Seen those, no. Okay. So why don't you guess? Just some some like major pop culture IPs. Funkoverse. Yeah. yeah. You know they make those figures, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just Come making sure. Come on. Uh. I, I, yes. I'll, there is. I'll give you one. Rick and Morty. Is I, one. Was, I was actually thinking Rick and Morty. I'll oh, okay. It's not. This is I was. No, I was thinking Rick and Morty. All right, well, pick a bigger one. Like money-making ones. Money-making ones? Star Wars. No, it got held by a fantasy fight in Hasbro. Oh, it did? Um, I don't think there is. Is there Star Wars Funko Pops? Yes. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. He collects them, apparently. No, I don't. I have one. That's right. the only reason I know. That it's called it's collecting. No. It's what not. else? Uh, Walking Dead. Oh, that's a good one, though. Then I would bet they would do that one in the future. But no? No. Hmm. Good things. <laughs> I don't know how much more he can point you. <laughs> Stranger Things. No. My man. I'm coming up with all the good ones, people. <laughs> I'm just saying. Think you're about bigger. to find out. Think really big. <laughs> Think powerfully big. Marvel. No, but it's DC. So DC. we'll give it to you. Oh, <laughs> disappointment after so they disappointment. Went with, they went out. everything... That's not the coolest. This kind of didn't. Well, but they also got Harry what, Potter. What, what are the, uh, Harry Potter. Harry Potter is And awesome. then one of the most popular sitcoms that you would imagine Friends? made into a. Seinfeld. Golden Girls. <laughs> I have a Golden Girl. Uh, who thought it was going to be a good <laughs> idea to play a strategy board game with the Golden Girls? What's wrong with that? <laughs> Hey, Thank dude. you for being a friend. It's a cooperative game, bah, of course. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Each turn, you pick one of your characters to perform two actions. They have actions like moving and challenges. There's an innovative cooldown system. Uh, Each character in Funko Universe is unique, so you have different combinations. So you can take Rose and the Joker up against Hermione and Morty. And you know I'm going to make it happen. I like it. I Actually, like it. I do like it. I think the Golden Girls is so off the wall that I'm going to get it. Dude, oh we've got, God. like, now Bob Ross games and Kenny no. G. Oh, sure, yeah, but in those great. games, you don't have them running around fighting people. Hey, man. Are you going to play this? I'll play it, We're sure. Play it Are you going to buy it? No, I don't think yeah. so, but I also... I don't know how many of these things you own, but I do own one, but only one. You own one. Star Wars one. Han Solo from the uh, the newer set. And I own a single figure. What do you think it is? Well, it's Hellboy. Golden Girls because you already said that. No, no, it's not mine. I bought I bought one for my girlfriend. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have one though. I own. Oh, you have one. one? Okay, let me think. With you, not Walking Dead. Cthulhu. Cthulhu, Cthulhu thing. Something Cthulhu. It's not a Cthulhu thing. Oh, you wait. You bought it's it for you, game. or you bought it I for bought your it girl? For me. Oh, video you game. Bought it for you. It's a video Fallout. game thing. It's a Fallout. Oh, okay. One of the power armor. The T nineties. Uh, yeah, T whatever it is. It's, one it's, of the, it's a T ninety power armor. Yeah. yeah they, they make the different. They got like T eighty fives, T nineties. They okay, make. Okay, I forget okay. which one it is, but yeah, it's a power armor little dude. It's awesome. All right, I'm actually pretty pumped about this. I think this this could be cool. It, this it, seems neat. I like the idea of using what they do already to make board games. This is going to be a direct competitor like to Unmatched from Restoration so? Games. Yeah. Well, it's that whole yeah. mix different things together. I we already, you know. They don't have um, uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park, though. Yeah, but it's going to be IP versus IP because the Mondo, they have Buffy the Vampire Slayer. They have Bruce Lee. And then they have Jurassic Park, and then of course they took all the old stuff. Here they they have these IPs. This is a head-to-head -head thing. It's gonna be interesting. I yeah. like it. Mm. All right. And then the news that was just announced this morning: Tickets Ride 15th Anniversary Edition. Oh wow! All right. Missed so, this. Okay. Well, it just happened an yeah. hour. I'm so supposed ago. to be on top of it. <laughs> so what this is, as far as I can tell, is just another reprinting. And they switched out the regular trains for what they're calling exclusive clear trains that they're have been out for years now yeah. for as, as prizes and tournaments and right. stuff. Promotional trains, yeah. Although I don't know that I've seen the light blue ones before. I think all of these have been around. Okay. There's also a book in there, a four-page booklet talking about the story of Ticket to Ride. And then the whole thing has a sleeve on it 
so okay. that they didn't have to reprint the box. Okay. Uh -huh. Retail price of 50 bucks. So this is not nearly as nice as the 10th anniversary edition, but it's also not nearly as expensive. Sure. Well, it's about half so, the price, you know? Yeah, I mean, there it shows you the back of the box. It looks exactly the same. I don't know if the card backs are different. Are I'd have to the compare small them. small cards or the regular size No, they cards. changed that years ago. Yeah, okay. Everything is regular size cards now. It I doesn't say if it includes um, 1910 in there. So I don't know. Probably not. Thir oh, no. 30 destination tickets, it doesn't. Because 30 was only... That I find a little disappointing. Because... But again, if this is supposed to be an introductory, an introductory jumping on point to Ticket to Ride, then that makes sense not to put it in there. But here's the That's good nice. news. That's if nice. you own Ticket to Ride, you don't need to get this. Not really. And you no. shouldn't even feel like obliged. To, you know how like, they add a little bit extra content? I don't think I would get it for the clear trains Can't or the booklet. Can't you buy the clear trains separately anyway? No. On eBay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. That's the news! So the let's news. jump to the Kickstarter news and war game news. Hello, fellow gamers. So this is the last week before Gen Con. We're going to do Kickstarters, Kickstarter show and stuff. But next week, we will not be doing any of that because we'll be at Gen Con and hopefully seeing you guys there. And if not, you guys can go to Gen Cant and win lots of awesome prizes, I'm sure. I think they're still doing that this year. And what else? I think that's about it. Let's get started. Featured this week, we have One Small Step by Academy Games, which is for two to four engineers slash administrators looking to argue about whose role is most important as your designated rule giver builds up an internal rage that they can never be quenched. After that, players will join the space race by sending objects into orbit by placing workers and blocking opponents' moves, drafting cards, and sending your nation to the moon for 60 minutes in this engine building set collection game that starts at $65. Now, if you are more interested in friendly debates rather than space, then Trial by Trolley by Skybound Games is the party game you're looking for as three to 13 people with an incredibly dark sense of humor argue over life's most important questions for 30 to 90 minutes. Like, would you run a train over your evil twin holding your faithful pet or your grandparents who will haunt you for the rest of your life. Now, decks of these morally ambiguous choices cost $25, but I assure you, the memories you make with your corrupt friends will last forever. Speaking of terribly corrupt people, Shasin brings three to five political leaders to the table in this area control game that can take place in USA, India 2020, Earth 2040, or Rome 40 BCE, as players will be making political decisions, collecting resources such as clout, and gerrymandering the heck out of some maps for 90 to 120 minutes, as nothing says hashtag winning as much as feeding the public conspiracies about your opponents. Now getting your hands on this box of political warfare starts at $59. And finally, the hype train's last stop for today woo -woo, is Dice Throne Adventures by Roxley Games, who's built a cooperative campaign adventure for one to four heroes. Players will use characters from the previous seasons to explore a new modular world, collecting loot and cards for their character decks, and battling minions and bosses for 90 to 120 minutes, taking this dueling dice rolling game through an epic level adventure at a cost of $69. Thanks so much for joining me this week, guys. If you want to know more about any of the Kickstarters that you saw here today, then join me at GloryHound.com as we talk about all these Kickstarters in depth and if we would back them or not on our live show. You guys get to contribute and tell us what you think, which is so much fun. And other than that, I think I will see you guys all next week. Actually, no, I won't see you guys all next week because I will be at Gen Con. So I guess I'll see you at Gen Con. This is Steve Hackett here, you're watching No Enemies Here, Wargaming News. He's the former guitarist of Genesis. Yeah, he plays war games. You know who else is on that picture? Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins. Just saying. Today, we're gonna go off the beaten track a little bit. I'm gonna let you into my war room, where you can see all my war games. Aren't you happy? No. You know you're in my war room when you see that. Oh, that's a sign of a bathroom. You're a bathroom sign, you three-legged nincompoop. This is what a wargamer's war room looks like. All right, there's a little studio. There's my war game. 
desk, and my games. These are all old Avalon Hill games, and that fourth one from the left, that's B-17 Queen of the Skies, one of my favorites. And that one there is Solo, and so is that one, and so is that one. There's not that many more gamers around, that's why I like to play solo games. Baba, I'm around! Yeah, you are around. Maybe you should lay off the chocolate a little bit, you know, get a little less around. And here we have newer games. Let's stop at this one for a second. No Retreat, The Italian Front. That's my grandfather when he was a Bersaglieri in the Italian Army in 1944. And that's a picture of my grandfather in the rulebook with a short description. And that's my grandfather as a playing piece in the game. Isn't that cool? Eh? First Steve Hackett of Genesis, now my grandfather in the game. Hey, it's who you know, man. It's like Uncle Luigi who works in the East End for that factory called The Mob. He says you're connected to... Shut up! What's the matter with you? It's okay, he brought me to his factory once. There was nobody there, it was a big place. But there was four guys playing cards. Oh my god, I'm dead. Now let's continue with a tour of my war room, the games. Those are all GMT games, I'll do a segment on them soon. And that one there, Combat Commander. Now that is a fun game. Now we're checking out the DVG games, remember that DVG? You have the U-Boat Leader series, the Sherman Tank Leader, Tiger Leader, Phantom Leader. And that's my Lock and Load Tactical Shelf and other games by Lock and Load. Yeah, I know this was a weird show, but I'm going to the World Board Gaming Championship uh, next week and uh, I just wanted to have some fun. So thanks for watching and I'll be back with DVG next week. Hey folks, welcome back to another Player Stereotypes segment here on the Board Game Breakfast Live. Hey, we were just called this today. I read a, a, a thread where someone said we were arrogant and snobby. Yeah, well, yeah, we're trying to go in a little bit introspective here because I know I've been this person before. Um, I think we all have at some point over something. That's the snob. The person who is constantly talking about how X game replaced Y game or, or you know, uh, killed a certain game or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the person who's always going around criticizing everybody else's game because it's not as good as the game that they want to play. Um, okay. It's that person who uh, basically looks down their nose at people who are just coming into the hobby and I know we probably won't be honest with ourselves and say well well I've never done that I'm always the hoppy go blah 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 I've never done that uh, it's not I'm really the case if you're really honest with blah, yourself blah, blah, blah. that's a pious snob actually yeah maybe I'm, I'm not snobby at all <laughs> I'm the least snobby person yeah. in the world <laughs> but I mean we've all kind of had our fringe at least experience being a snob because it's kind of natural yeah i think it's look there's a difference i think at the end of the day there's a difference between reacting to something from a point of view of where you are at now in whatever we're talking about yeah there's a difference between that and being a snob mm -hmm. the difference is judgment is part of it or not correct right yeah it's that idea of like i like x thing and i used to like y thing you are lesser than me it's only that last part that makes you a snob correct the rest is just an observation of oh man you like that game wow that's crazy. I I used to like 20 years ago, but you're at a different place. The problem is, is that even if you're not being snobby in here, you sound snobby. It sounds that 100%. way, and it come across as that way. And perception, unfortunately, because <laughs> perception can really be the only thing people worry about. Right. Sure. And that's unfortunate because a lot of times perception is wrong. But still, it's something we got to be careful with. And that's kind of the point of where I nope. wanted to go here is we have to be careful with the idea of sounding snobby even when we don't. No, it's true. Um, it's an interesting thing. It's sort of like that whole making sure you're saying when you share a point of view that you say, in my opinion, 
blah, 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 blah. No offense, but... No, that's not... No, that's not the same thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, it's obviously in my opinion, you know. But if you don't say it, it's almost... It should be on... It should be assumed it's there. If, you, yeah. if I'm making a point about something. This I feel the same way about this a little bit. This definitely comes... Uh, to me, the analogy is food, off times. So I just found out this morning that tomorrow night, I'm going to Chuck E. Cheese. All right? I know. You're right? eating salad, aren't you? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's what I always eat when I go to Chuck E. Cheese. And so, you know, <laughs> but even like McDonald's is even a thing. Like my kids are like, let's go to McDonald's. I'm like, McDonald's food is garbage. But I know distinctly when I was in college, I was like, McDonald's is my favorite place. That's right, 49 cent hamburgers. Yes, but is that snobby? Well, what I'm saying is I learned to enjoy better food, okay? As time goes by, to the point where someone's like, my fair hamburger is McDonald's. I'd be like, well, all right. If that's what you think the best burger is, you are so incorrect, sir. It no, really is. No, they're not incorrect. That is their favorite. Incorrect I, is, this burger is healthier than that burger. No, 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 no. I got that. But I'm saying that the snobbiness comes through in food off times where I'll be sitting there eating something and someone will go, this is nowhere near as good as whatever, whatever. This is better. This is trash. I'm like, yeah, but I, I enjoy this. You can yeah, even argue. I think it's a reactionary thing more to feel like you're being attacked than not. If I'm having something and someone says, oh, that is awful food, I'm like, I... Food is good. Right, yeah. like, that's the difference is how I react to it is different. You know what I mean? If I'm like, no, you're wrong, Colonel Sanders, that's where <laughs> then I'm feeling... Mama's right! I'm putting snobby on them. Maybe they were being snobby, maybe not, but it's... That's the difference. It's like Sam said, a perception thing. Yeah. McDonald's food is quantifiably less healthy for you than a burger from another place, possibly, right? Not necessarily. Possibly. That's why, you know, but... No, it, but you use the word quantifiably, which means that you're saying without the shadow said, of a doubt, it's possible. Those are at odds with each other. Well, first of all, no, he's right. <laughs> But, okay, with games, this is something I definitely struggle with, especially being a reviewer, because it's our job to give our opinions. Right. And I don't think there's anything snobby about a review. You get in a review, you say this game's garbage, that's fine. You're giving your straight-up opinion yeah. that was being asked for, in a sense. This is a review. Mm -hmm. It's then when I meet people in real life, and I walk up, and you put llama here, and I see people play llama, I'm like, that's trashy. Why are you not playing Uno? Right, or whatever, because I'm being snobby towards them, but I, it's my inner reviewer coming out. It's even worse when people are like, hey, what do you think of this game? Well, they asked you at that point. Well, yes, I know, but at the same time, there is a way to do it and a way not to do it. I yeah. disagree. Tactful. You, Somebody you asks serious? me. Yeah, I do. I, I do disagree. No, Somebody but there's asks, a tactful way to say it's bad. you think of this game about a game I don't like, I'll say, I think it's garbage. So, While they're playing it with other people who didn't ask? So yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, don't ask me that. That's a weird. Uh, no, I can't get into that dynamic. No. If you ask me what I th think of something, I will honestly tell you what I think of that thing. I'm like, oh, I'll tell you, but not in front of other people okay. who might hear. Okay. What do you think of this what? dress? I'm sorry. It's no just way. Thinking. No it's way. Just you thinking. give your honest opinion every single time. How does this make me look? Like a whale. <laughs> come no, on. I mean, come oh on. no, it's the same thing. No one should get hurt because I gave an opinion about a game. I'm but not people to hurt. do. A hundred percent, they do. Unless the designer is there, they shouldn't. The person didn't design the dress either. Come on, I'm making a commentary on them. But that's how people feel when you criticize a board game they're playing. They feel like you're making a commentary on them and the choice that they make. If so I go up, I, I found this out, I'm telling you, to my chagrin, I used to, when I go up to a table, I gotta look that up. and people would say, what do you think of this game? And I would say, <laughs> oh, man, it's an awful game, blah, blah, blah. People got offended, and it happened a lot. And we can say they shouldn't be offended, but it's just, if I, and I know the same things happen to me. I'm playing a game, I'm enjoying it, someone's like, oh, that game's awful. I'm like, well, I feel like you're insulting me because I like the game. You might not be. But yeah, it's still how it comes through. And All that's right. where it comes back to the whole perception thing. Yeah. You're not thinking I'm being a snob. Right, sure, and sure. And even if you are being a snob, you're not, you're not thinking that because you're just being normal. It's the perception that, you know, people will say you're being snobby towards me and my game, and that may not be the case. Right. But it, it really does. Tact is a huge part of this whole perception thing. Yeah, being it is. Being able I to know. say something in the right way 
You can say this game sucks in so many different ways and have it this not This game be. sucks. I know. Sucketh. This this game siphons. <laughs> siphons? Mm-hmm. It's a synonym. So, I know anyway. what siphoning something is. <laughs> How? Huh? How? Because I've had to steal fuel from cars. <laughs> <laughs> is that why I'm running out of fuel every day? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta save money somehow, Jack. <laughs> Concordia, son. <laughs> Get a nice big gulp of it sometimes. Oh. Yeah, oh, you ever had that? It cleans the innards. Oh, that's not good. These pipes really are clean. Anyway, the snob. Don't be that person. I dig it. Think about what you say before you talk so that people don't think you're a snob. All right. All right. Howdy, folks. Welcome to Bob the Numbers. My name is Hunter Thomason from The Family Showdown. This week, we're continuing my Through the Year series, where I started with the best game on Board Game Geek, starting in 1970. This week, 1976. Let's take a look at the top five, and we see that the number one game from 1976 is Panzer Group Guderian. Can I give it my best shot? Ranked 1,989 on Board Game Geek, but it's the 200th best board game. Panzer Group Guderian is a simulation of one part of World War II where the Germans are trying to take the city of Smolensk in Russia. It simulates two days of time and I consider this a real-time game because it takes about two days to play. In doing a little research on the game I found an interesting aspect of the game. There is units with hidden information. Crazy in a war game, but there is units that both sides do not know the strength of until the combat starts. Weird. Take a look at the ratings, just over 600 of them. We see they're mostly 7s and 8s for an overall rating of 7.3. Let's take a second to discuss the Board Game Geek rating system. This game does have a 7.3 rating, but games with few votes on the ratings, namely war games, are pushed down the list. That's why it's like 1,989. It's because the Board Game Geek system takes that 7.3 rating, translate it with magic to a 6 overall due to the low number of votes. So war games apparently are dominating the 70s. Four out of the seven episodes I've done have been war games. What's next year? Well, it'll be 1977. Is it a war game? See you next time. Hey there, it's Jen, the board game librarian, flipping some pages and pushing some cubes with my segment from the page to the table. I'm going to continue from a couple of weeks ago with uh, some segments from the American Library Association. So the sound is going to be the same, unfortunately. If that's something that bothered you, just go on to the next segment. Um, and if not, um, watch on and see why these publishers think working with libraries is amazing. Hello, my name is Travis Newsom, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for Games Workshop North America. Games Workshop is a company that produces plastic miniature kits in science fiction and fantasy realms. Our hobby is based around the pillars of collecting, building, painting, playing, and reading stories about our fantasy worlds. Games Workshop is exhibiting at the ALA conference in order to announce our Warhammer Alliance activity plan which provides free models, paints, tools, paint brushes, and activity packs for libraries, schools, and other community organizations to allow them to show others how to participate in the Games Workshop hobby. In addition, we run 153 wholly owned Warhammer hobby centers throughout the United States and Canada, which provides support to the Warhammer Alliance pack by offering free play space, free activities, and free miniature painting and playing tutorials, as well as support for the hobby in general. Our hope is that through the Warhammer Alliance program, we'll be able to collaborate with libraries across the U.S. in order to engage hobbyists that already exist within their communities, or to recruit new hobbyists into existing gaming programs. Thank you. All right, by the way, welcome Jacob Welch for joining us as a subscriber to YouTube. Yay! All right, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Jacob. I will briefly close the comments here because I don't want to cheat. That's bum, right. Bum, bum. Welcome back to 10 for 10, everybody. Uh, first off, a big thanks to Mr. Roy Canada over there for making this for me to allow me to, uh, to play the game 
with these cards and with a, a wet erase marker. And they're, they have some, you know, custom artwork all over them. So now I can just Ooh. write right on these and then wipe them down we between like, games. We we're, just level up in quality. Do -do 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 -do. Level up, son. All right, so, guys. Uh, Wait a minute, you didn't show these. I'll get to it. Why are you jumping the gun, son? Because you put them out in the open. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Flat those. All right, so uh, as you said a little earlier, just one just won the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the best game of the year in Germany. Congratulations to that game. And between that and code names that recently won as well, it seems to be a new trend for the Spiel des Jahres. And so here I've got 10 uh, party games. And I want to. I want you to see which one, if they had won, assuming they would have been nominated and won the year they came out, would have bucked that trend earlier. So older here is going to be better, fellas. These are all, like I said, party games, and you are trying to pick the older ones. So we're going to set these out like so. And we've got apples to apples, wits and wages, jungle speed, two rooms and a boom, pitch car, Jenga, Pictionary, Secret Hitler, Scattergories, and Coup. So what are we trying to get here? Older is better. Older is better. If they had won the year they come out, they came out, they would have set that trend in motion much earlier. That's good. Uh -huh. So older is better, which should make you happy. And speaking of making you happy. You've lost both times we've played this. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. Do I get a handicap, Papa? You sure do. Yay! Shut up! Shut up, you're a bathroom sign. <laughs> but I've got two special powers here. I'm going to let you pick which assistant you want. Okay. Tom's going to get the other one. All right. You get first crack, okay? Okay. If you want to go with the, uh, the uh, investigator, one time in the game, you may when you pick a card, you can look at it first before you decide to keep it or give it to Tom. Ooh. If you go with the mathematician, mm -hmm. at the end of the round, from your five cards, you'll pick four. And you only have to organize those four for a mm. possible five-point bonus. Okay. Which one do you want? Tom's going to get the other one. I'm going to take the investigation. Yeah, that's the better one, I think. But we'll see. There you go, Tom. That's for you. You'll use it at the end. I'm going to want that back when you use it. No, they. And who wants to go first? Well, Sam gets to choose. On choose. Uh, I'm gonna go with Secret Hitler. Okay, be careful. Don't show it. I'm gonna give it. To <laughs> that was a, that was exactly what I was gonna do for <laughs> my first move. You were gonna be getting Secret Hitler. <laughs> Alrighty. All right, Tom. What do you got? You can pick Pictionary, Scattergories, or Coup. I think I'm gonna take. Pictionary and keep it. Okay, it's taking Pictionary. That opens up two rooms and a boom, and we've still got Scattergories and Coup as your choices, Sam. Don't forget you've got a one-time power to look at one of these before you keep it or give it away. Uh, and if he doesn't use it, does he get any <coughs> bonus points? He does not <laughs> use it. I read a comic about that, how like in video games, you always get these really rare items like mm -hmm. this one heals all your health and all your magic points and there's like three in the game so you get it you're like you I, never will use it. I will never use it because right. it's that um, valuable i'm right. gonna go with coup it's like and games games that reward you games that give you a token that says use this to re-roll your dice but if you still have it at the end of the game it's a point i don't like that it rewards you for using it but also rewards you for not using it make your players tell them to use it give them the power to use it i'm gonna take categories you better use your power sooner. I'm gonna. It's not gonna matter. <laughs> Which is why that one actually. I think they're about even. Got it. Yeah. I don't really think I'm gonna use it. I just didn't want him to use it. Okay. Oh, good point. I would have used it. And I'm gonna get two rooms in boom. That is my next move. Was going to you. Anyway. All right, Sam. So actually, <laughs> you get all these. Can he look at one now? No, he cannot. This game's over. The game's over. Yeah, I can't look at it now. Oh, I, I thought he was like super confident. I won. <laughs> no, I don't. I think I, <laughs> okay, I, think so I got Tom, closer this time than I have in Just in, pick in other four games. of those and only arrange four. You want the numbers to go from, again, oldest to newest game? Oh, do I only get points for the four or do I get points for all five? You'll still get five points if you get it right. All right. Well, that actually helps me out because I don't know if Pictionary, um, if Pictionary or Scattergories came first. 
Okay, so you are saying Pictionary, then coup, then two on. rooms hang and a on, boom. Hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm debating on this two rooms and a boom and secret Hitler. I do not remember which one. Are we going by published date or Kickstarter? Ah, it's the date that's on BGG. Maybe it's this, I think. They're really close. I also know they're probably one and two points, but we'll find out. All right, and Sam, what are you doing? Starting with Pitch Car. So, just to clarify for yes. Sam, is that Pitch Car or is that Carabande? That is Pitch Car. Uh, but doesn't Pitch Car. I think they might be under the same listing. Carabande? It does. They're the exact same game, except the puzzle pieces don't fit. I think they might. Going by the date on that, I assume they're they're under the same listing because I okay. have the dates. Speaking of which, those <clears throat> loops. Are you getting some loops? Yeah. Fruit loops. I'm gonna go here. Then here. Okay, good. And then Oh mood lighting. Wits and wagers. Here and then here. And then jungle speed. I don't know. Alright, very complete well. Guesses. Alright, Sam, let's go ahead and take a look at what you did there. So you're saying pitch car is the oldest. That's a seven. Pitch car came out. The date I have is 1995. Yeah, that sounds Oops. right. Jenga's the oldest? Jenga is the oldest on the list. Wow. Jenga came out in 1983. I got... Oh, I had that one wrong, too. Yeah. Oh, well. But that's a lot of points. You have a, you're running the top half here mm -hmm. uh, for the most part. So there you go. That's going to be your score. Well, I got the nine and the eight. This is either... So, that's your nine. You're good because the ten's here. Eight. Got it. All right, then coup. Oh. <laughs> oh, I got the three, two, one. Yeah, but you better make sure they're in the right order. Ah, I switched. <laughs> I should have. I should have kept you it. To you totally psyched yourself out on that one. You had them correct. It, sh it would be coup 2012, two rooms and a boom 2013. Secret Hitler came out in 2016. Two Rooms and a Boom did not come out in 13. No way. That's BGG as an incorrect date. Then it did not come out that early. In Japan, it probably did. Two Rooms and a Boom? That's right. Yes. You guys are thinking about you're thinking about the Cthulhu game. No, Two Rooms and a Boom is the Kickstarter game. You remember that thing you say about your game shows when you do them? <laughs> Suck it up, buttercup! <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong! No, I, I, that's fine. I what do you mean, got? 23. <laughs> I got more than that. <laughs> Quite a bit more, right? At 32, 20, I think. 32. So Sam whooped on you, son. Publisher, get in touch with us. Or is it with Z? This is, this is, I think it's a good game. Yeah, that's good. All right, very nice with John Sam. You won that. Are you still happy with the fact that you picked this one? Never used it. Nah. You used yours to... Much, much to my chagrin, I think is the word of the day. <laughs> chagrin. chagrin. Move on to chagrin, contributors. Yeah. These chagrin. guys make less fun Shut of up. me. Bye. Hi, Mike Delisio from Solo Mode Games. From time to time, I'll talk to people who aren't big solo gamers, and they'll express some concerns that they have with the solo gaming community. And it's always interesting to get into these conversations to kind of find out what some of these negative impressions are. And somebody I was speaking to was particularly annoyed with uh, Kickstarter campaigns and games that they are potentially interested in backing having solo modes added because their concern is, look, I'm paying more money for components that I'm not going to use. I have to sort through these components. I have to pay for something that I don't want, and they find that bothersome. And it was interesting because I hadn't really considered that before. As a solo gamer, those are all perks to me, not things to uh, avoid. And so... I didn't know if there was any way to get around this, but recently I just backed a Kickstarter campaign called the Margraves of Valeria. This is a continuing game in the Valeria cycle. And what they did there was they made the solo mode a add-on. It's a $6 add-on for 16 cards. And at first, I'll be honest, I was a little taken aback and, and maybe even a little bit um, off-put by it. But the more I thought about it, that previous conversation I had came to mind and I thought, you know, that's a pretty reasonable compromise. 
I think $6 in this case is a fair amount. I mean, do 16 cards cost $6? No, but there's also production and research and development, all those other add-ons uh, that, that come into to cost. And so perhaps this is the direction that Kickstarters may go, where if there's a solo mode, it's added in as a potential add-on variant so that you can pay for it if you want it, and if you don't want it, you're not paying for it. So I'd be interested to hear the thoughts of solo gamers and non-solo gamers alike. Do you think this is a good way to handle this type of a situation? If you can let me know in the comments below, I'd definitely appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time, and have a great day! What's happening? All right. Oh my. He I'm sorry you lost, huh? You'll win <laughs> next time. Jeez, this guy takes stuff serious. All right, this box says fragile. Fragile? Fragile. Is it gonna be some sort of lamp leg? That would be hilarious. It would be. My wife thinks that's the worst. We we have the same opinion of the lamp. <laughs> it's, it's not good, it's not good. All righty. He won it. What is the game? Well. It's, uh, okay, so, well packaged. Oh, it's a tin. It's detective. It's Detective Club, but I've already reviewed Detective Club, so I have a backup box. That's that's called being prepared. We didn't even get excited can I keep, about that. Can I keep this skirt? That's, that's, is that detective skirt? Club is a great game. That's but awesome. I could wear this, man. Make, make something out don't. of it. It's like the Lion King thing. What's that? Where the guy dances. This one comes with two. No, it's one game and a mat. All right, box can go. All right, what is the game here? Oh, there's something else in here. Is there? That's why I always check. Or can Kenny I always check. No. Oh, this is Rurik. Rurik. What, is, what is Rurik? Dawn of Kiev. Dawn of Kiev. We were just talking about it the other day. Yeah. I remember talking about it. I must. Well, no, I. Oh, this we were talking about this. Yeah. Why were we talking about this? Because something else was designed by this company on uh, Kickstarter. Okay. Right? Yeah. This, Metal coins! This showed up on Kickstarter, and we said, Metal. that looks interesting. What other game have they done? And then we said, Rurik. I don't remember that. I did. Here. Right here. Diggy, diggy, ho. Stop! All right, there it is. Rurik. So Rurik, Rurik. Dunn of Kiev, I'm assuming this is a historical game. This is the same person who came up with the cube. Rurik's cube. <laughs> oh, my word. Mm, no, sir. That is incorrect, sir. Mm. Are we going to open that thing or what? Well, here. You're the opener of the box. It's up. Oh, Meanwhile, I got one of these mats. I like these Whoa. stitched mats. That's a nice looking board. Oh, sorry. That is a very nice map. Is that your map? That's a nice map. That is a nice map. That looks great. I like these I like stitch the, things the a lot. The stitching is wonderful, yeah. Yep. It's vibrant. It's actually a very vibrant play mat, which is... Vibrant. They're not always The that. box is not giving me that opinion, but... No, no, but the mat looks really good. I mean, nobody bought this for the game from what I hear. Everybody just wanted the play mat. <laughs> Peacekeeper games. That's not a thing I'm kidding. Woo Ooh, nice. Look at these. The very cool, very cool. Ooh, they have yellow. I like oh, it. Oh, wow, these are like... Wait a minute. They have stuff on the bottom? Something in... Whoa! Ooh. That's neat. That's fancy schmancy right there. Wow, that is pretty cool. I've not seen that before. Well, you're not going to see Gotta it. Gotta be careful how you open them. Time either. Okay, That's well, really cool, at least actually. these meeples with numbers on are clearly... Numbered. Clearly numbered as, as opposed to letter. Some are these replacements for those, or are these? No, I have no idea. These have these are nice, di nicely designed bays that you can pull it out. Really, right? Easy. They have a little angle. The yeah. only problem is you're going to need a little bit of a nail to get these apart. Not necessarily. You, if you, uh, I mean, if you just, you can just pull. Yeah, it. I do like the resource oh, trays. I you do have to use your nail a little bit, ah, don't man, you? Man, just bring a machete. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> word. You pull out a machete, and it's like, what? Just open just it up. Opening the organization the page. Very nice. Nice all, touch. All games that have a ton of stuff in them should put this in the box. 
Rose. How many pages are in this? Looks like 11, I'm but out. this is all. Nope. Looks like half, so 10 and a half. Mm. <laughs> well, that's better. <laughs> all right, the board looks the same Here's as the mat, the actually. And then these are player boards, probably. Oh, it does. Okay, like long long boats or something that you can. I gotta uh, say, this looks on. better than the than the the Kickstarter page made it look. Remember? True. Yeah, I don't recall, but this looks good. Yeah. Uh, another thing there. There we go. Some resources. Pieces. Oh, those are actions, perhaps. Say what? Stickers. Ah! Always, always uh, useful. Yeah, These but look the like they go on the bases of the. Okay, figures. I remember now. This, the designer of this game, uh -huh. we were just talking about yesterday. Okay. Old West, and Empresario, and Lockup. Oh, I'm excited again. Yeah, 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 and Dice Hospital. That's three really good games. Okay, very nice. So, Metal? Yes. Or cardboard? <laughs> I was just going to yes. do the same thing. I was gonna <laughs> Correct answer, sir. <laughs> very well We don't done. want no... It's cards. You guys can open the cards. <laughs> we're doing the same thing, aren't we? Yes. Well, this Gosh, is, we hang out too much. We're, we're together this, here too much. This like pops out. This little clear thing. That's interesting. You never seen those? I've seen plastic things. You're with being poppy snobbed holes, upon. Yes. <laughs> I've been snobbed. <laughs> These look good. You should paint them. Are they not? Yeah, I'm telling yet? you. I'm actually. You I'm actually most interested in this because of the designer. I agree. These, wow, these minis look really good. Um, cool. Alrighty, well that's, that is a pleasant unbox, unboxing. Yeah. Detective Club's also a great game, but I just yeah, have already reviewed it. Yeah, we've seen it, we've reviewed we've already, it already. already right, yeah, right. We've already done it. Yeah, this looks really neat, man. This is <clears> exciting. <throat> Pass me that over there. Alrighty, that's our boring, uh, no, I didn't say boring. Surprise unboxing. Let's right. move on. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Aaron from the Board Game Brothers, and welcome to Mystery Component Monday. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing you a picture of a game piece, and it's up to you to try to guess what game that piece comes from. So put on your thinking caps, because here's this week's picture. Okay, time's up, pencils down, and thinking caps off. Now, the answer to this week's question is Takenoko. Takunoko is a game where players are trying to expand the Emperor's Imperial Garden and grow bamboo with the help of the Imperial Gardener. But roaming around the garden is the Emperor's pet panda, who is on a mission to eat all the bamboo he can get his paws on. And let me tell you, he's very hungry. Takunoko is a beautifully produced game that the whole family can sit down and enjoy. And that's this week's game. Congratulations to everybody who got it correctly, and for everybody else, eh, don't worry about it. There's always next week. But until then, I hope you all have a happy breakfast. Hi, I'm Doug Jr. And I'm Doug III. And you're watching A Fellowship of Peoples with Doug and Doug Gaming. Well, I had a blast at the Dice Tower Con in Orlando. I bet you did. I did. It was really cool. Several people recognized me from Board Game Breakfast. That was awesome. They'd say, hey, aren't you Doug Jr.? And I'd say, yeah. And they'd say, is Doug the Third here? And I'd say, no. And they'd say, oh. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. Well, it didn't help that my uh, badge name read Corey instead of Doug Jr. Since the name things caused a bit of confusion, I thought maybe we should explain. Here we go. My father was born in 1939 and given the name Douglas Corrigan Black. So when I was born in 1964, I was given the name Douglas Corrigan Black Jr. Since everybody called my father Doug, they decided to call me Corey so as to avoid confusion. So when I was born in 1998, the name was passed to me, so I became Douglas Corrigan Black III, and uh, since most people called him Corey, I was just called Doug, and uh, my grandfather passed away in 2013, but I do proudly carry on his name. Now, the name change between Doug and Corey bouncing back and forth helped to avoid confusion in the house, but it did cause some confusion in other places like banks and the IRS. 
When my dad and I started our YouTube channel, we thought the name Doug and Doug Gaming sounded pretty cool. Also, the initials D&D kind of play into the fact that we both like Dungeons & Dragons, so we officially became Doug and Doug Gaming. So, the question is, what should you call me? Well, in my gaming world, I've become Doug Jr., so let's just stick with that. Well, we do apologize that we didn't actually cover a game this episode, but we will be covering some new content on our YouTube channel, so check out Doug and Doug Gaming here on YouTube, and we will see you there. Thanks so much for watching A Fellowship of Meeples with Corey and Doug Gaming. Wait, what? See, it really doesn't work. No, it doesn't. And that's it for another live board game breakfast. Thanks to everybody who joined us. Um, we have our Gen Con coverage begins today. Uh, our top 10 anticipated games for Gen Con. Yourselves. Tomorrow we'll be going over what we're doing at Gen Con and our, our booth and stuff there. And then Monday, Sam and I will be going through all the games coming out at Gen Con and giving Ooh. you our uninformed opinions. Well, actually, pretty informed at this point. Cause Somewhat uninformed. There's a lot of games from Gen Con that we've seen. Yeah. Snob. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, folks. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Have a great day. Sam Healy. Take care, folks. See you on the flip side. Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production. Sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., an amazing place to buy board games. Cool stuff, in stock, at CoolStuffInc.com.